Let's consider another important special case of linear models applied in a, in a pretty general setting. So imagine if our y looks something like this. It's y11 up to y1 n over 2 and y21 up to y2 n over 2. So in other words, our y is really equal to two vectors, let's say y1 and y2, of two, where the first comes from one group and the second comes from another group. So we might think of a setting where we're plotting y and we have group 1, group 2, you know, something like a box plot. So in some in instance like that, where you're interested in modeling the fact that there's two groups using least squares. So we could do this with y minus, let's say, x beta minimizing that least squares criteria, where x is equal to a bunch of ones and a bunch of zeros, and then a bunch of zeros and a bunch of ones. So that, and so, so x has n over two ones in the first vector and n over two ones in the second vector. Now, Let's work out what beta hat works out to be in this case. So beta hat works out to be exactly equal to, of course, x transpose x inverse x transpose y. But x transpose x, okay, so that's just a vector of ones and zeros, a vector of zeros and ones times ones and zeros and zeros and ones, um, and we want that inverse, let me get rid of this, and then our next component is x transpose y, which is the vector of ones and zeros, then zeros, then ones, then times y. Okay, so looking at this matrix, this is gonna be n over two because when I multiply this matrix, this vector times this vector, it's going to just add up the number in that first group. Um, when I multiply this vector times this vector, it'll just be zero. Same thing for this other diagonal, and this one will be n over two. And there's nothing in particular about having equal numbers in the two groups, they, they could have been um, an n1 and n2 there. I just did n over 2 just in the balanced case where there's an equal number in, in, in both groups. Now let's look at this statement right here. This first one is going to be the sum of the first group. So let's just call that um, j n over 2 times uh, y1. And the second one is just going to be j transpose n over 2 times y2. Okay? And so, and I'm sorry, that's inverted. And the inverse is pretty easy because then it's just one over, because it's a diagonal matrix, so it's just one over both of those. And then so what we get is that y1 bar and y2 bar are the slope estimates for beta, which is what we would imagine should happen. If we have an effect, one for group one and a second effect for group two, the likely estimate would have to have turned out to be the average for group one and the average for group two. So the fitted values, the fitted values in this case, is just going to be, if you're in group one, it's going to be jn times y, y1 bar, uh, j, I'm sorry, jn over two times y1 bar if you're in group one, and jn over two times y2 bar if you're in group two.